Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about me and my journey throughout CRNA school. Today's video is going to be about CRNA school interview tips. If you guys are interested, let's get into the nitty gritty. I mentioned in a previous video that I applied for two application cycles. Um, in my first application cycle, actually in my first application, I actually got an interview for the school that I wanted to go to. Um, so. I was preparing for that one um, just about when COVID was hitting, so they were making the interviews remote. So I had my interview via Zoom. And um, this school in particular, I had heard some things as far as the interview that they were changing up their process, but I was still preparing either way for a more clinical based interview. But I was actually pleasantly surprised that it was more of a personality based interview. I, I only had maybe one or two scenario questions but they kind of just wanted to get to know me and honestly i thought it went well the interview lasted probably about 30 minutes but um they were asking questions like you know per personality type stuff and things that you normally wouldn't actually like think that you'd be asked and i think that they do that so that you don't prepare for or prepare something that they want to hear it's more like how you react on the spot what? So what I'm going to do is do two different parts because um, I had in my second application year, I did have an interview for the school that I'm actually attending now and they did a clinical based um, like questioning and they did do some personality based, but they really wanted to know the clinical history. So what I'm going to do is break this down into two separate um, parts. So first it's going to be how to prepare for a personality type interview and then it's going to be how to prepare for a clinical type interview. How are you gonna prepare for a personality type interview when really there's you don't know what they're gonna ask? The one thing I will recommend though is to start planning what you would say if they asked, tell me about yourself. Are you gonna say, I'm a nurse? No, well, that's your job. Tell me about you, I wanna know about you. So start preparing that ahead of time. And to be honest with you, that to me was the hardest question. You know, it was a loaded question like, do you want to know that I like long walks on the beach and that I'm really a fan of pizza Lunchables? Like, you don't know. So you want to kind of start planning ahead of time so that, yes, you're kind of preparing for something that they want to hear, but also that you're not kind of like, if that's the first thing they're going to ask you, that's going to set the tone for the rest of the interview. And if you feel like, you know, like that's how you're gonna be for the rest of the questions here on out. And that's what they want. They wanna see your nerves. They wanna see how you react under pressure. Because honestly, if you think about the job that you're trying to get into, it's a lot of pressure and you're at the head of the bed. So the head of the bed is what they look at first when there's an issue. They're looking at anesthesia like, hey, there's something wrong. You know, you're the one pushing meds, you know, like it's always anesthesia's fault. So they're gonna look at you and they wanna see how you react under pressure. So that's why they put you under these scenarios. So. First things first, plan it out. Who am I? What do I like to do? What's my favorite hobby? Like, how did I get here? Why do I wanna be a CRNA? They're gonna ask that. Why do you wanna do this job? And don't say it's for the money. If you say it's for the money, they might as well just hang up the call right then and there. Don't say you're doing this for the money. So that's, the, I, I kind of went to the next part. Now think about it. Why do you wanna do this career? Why have you been working so hard to get here? It's not like something you came up with overnight. You did a four year bachelor's degree in nursing. Granted, that may have been something you did in the past and you've been a nurse for 10, 15 years. And now it's something that you wanna do. But again, you can't just plan it overnight. You need a BSN. Yeah, you have it, right? But then you need your CCRN. You need to shadow. You need your certifications. You need your letters of recommendation. You need a personal statement. That's why I'm saying you, you didn't plan this overnight. So why is it that you wanna be a CRNA? What has drawn you so much to this career that you've done everything in your power to get to this point? So start thinking about it. What led you to this career? What made you wanna do this? Is it the autonomy? Is it the actual, like, the, you know, is it something you're fascinated by? Is it the medications, you know, that you're a provider? What is it? What got you here? Start thinking about that because they're gonna ask that. <laughs> Next, let's talk about, if we're in this personality type interview type of scenario, they're gonna throw things at you that you probably wouldn't even think that they would ask. So I believe I was asked, I think 
it was either something about dogs or maybe like a type of cheese. Let's make it a question. Here we go. If you could pick three dog breeds that describe you, what would they be and why? So in that scenario, you're like, it's a super easy question. I didn't prepare for this. You maybe want to ask me about like a clinical scenario that I had to use my critical thinking. No, no. You have to literally stop and think this through. This is what they do. They want you to not know that this is coming. So they want to see how you react. And I've said that many, many, many times. So three dog breeds. You can say, I think I'd be a pit bull because they're actually quite lovable and a little bit misunderstood. Or a golden retriever because who doesn't like a golden retriever? And then maybe Let's say a border collie, because that reminds you of an old person and you have an old soul. <laughs> I don't know, something along those lines. They they want to see that time, you know, where you're like, hmm, hmm, going through the archives in your brain thinking, well, what kind of dog breed would I be? <laughs> or if you, if you can describe yourself as a cheese, who would you be? And you could say, well, I'd say I'm like brie cheese. Because on the surface, I'm pretty tough and solid. But once you get to know me, I kind of loosen up in the middle. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. So don't always prepare for a personality type interview, but definitely prepare for like the main talking points that you would describe, like I mentioned. Who are you? Why do you want to be a CRNA? Next, you're going to ask you, how do you plan to finance this? How do you plan to get through school? Three years no work? Oh, and don't you dare mention that you want to work while you're in school. Some schools actually make you sign a clause that you can't. So if they ask you, how are you going to go from being a provider for the home to being a full-time student, have something planned. Give them something that they want to hear. This is something that they do want to hear. This is no joke because they're investing in your future and you're investing in their program. So they want to make sure that you're one, not going to drop out, that you're serious about this that you're not gonna like fail because you're trying to work and go to school. So they need to know that you're in it, that you're committed. That's the thing. I think from what I've learned so far in the 11 weeks that I've been in school is that it's all about commitment. If you can commit to it, it's not that hard. You just literally have to want it. So they wanna know that you want it and that there's nothing that's gonna get in the way of that. So when they ask you, how do you plan on doing uh, the financing portion of school, they want to know that you're committed. That's the bottom line. All right. I think I've covered a great majority of the personality type interview, but just plan ahead and prepare for the worst. Just think they could literally ask you anything. And especially if they want to get to know you, they're going to ask detailed stuff. So just start preparing, start preparing. I mean, you can't prepare for everything because they do throw some outlandish things at you. Next up, let's talk clinical based interviews. So when I got my second interview, the, I guess she's the director of the admissions program. Yeah. The admissions coordinator. I'd have to look up her job description, but she sent me an email giving me tips and pointers on what to do to prepare for the interview. Now my case was a little different because I didn't have adult ICU experience and I assumed that they were going to ask adult ICU questions. So then I started studying for like, you know, CV stuff and, and like drips and stuff for adults. And then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to say my truth. I'm going to tell them, I know that you're expecting this of me, but I didn't do this in my clinical practice. And I was just going to tell them, let's talk about something that I've done. So I kind of was just studying things that I've done because I didn't want to lie or tell them a scenario or anything like that. If they asked me, tell me a scenario when, because I didn't experience that. I came from a NICU background. And if they didn't think NICU was ICU, then why did they give me an interview? Right? So I said, no, I'm not going to study adult ICU because I didn't do it. So I studied NICU and then I got to the interview and I got a slap in the face. They said, I understand you did NICU, but these are adult ICU questions. So what I'm going to tell you is that you need to plan for the worst. Let's say you're in a tiny little NICU, plan for CV, plan for surgical, plan for trauma. Think of drips that you use in the day to day. 
everything that you mention is fair game. Everything in your resume is fair game. If you say, I'm the charge nurse or whatnot, or I'm the uh, head pick team leader, they're going to ask you about that. I'm telling you, if you put it in your resume, they can ask about it. So prepare ahead of time. If you have nothing to say, don't put it in. So what I've heard is that your interview is tailored based on what you say. So if they ask you, for instance, let's start the interview. Tell me a drip you would use in a scenario like so-and-so, and you mention norepinephrine. They can literally take norepinephrine and just ask you a billion questions and just circle back. Oh, you mentioned norepinephrine. What's the mechanism of action? What's the duration of onset? What's the peak duration? Anything, anything, literally anything. So if you're going to mention a drug, make sure you know about it. Then they may ask you what type of sedatives you use in your clinical practice. Oh, propofol? Perfect. Let's talk about propofol. And they can ask you anything about pro propofol. Oh, I gave propofol for this so-and-so disease process. Oh, you mentioned this disease process. Tell me about this disease process. So like I'm telling you, anything you say can be fair game. So whatever comes out of your mouth, make sure you know what you're talking about. Because they they were seeing ICU nurses once. They know that you're bullcrapping if you're saying lies. Don't be fooled. You're going to have usually a panel of interviewers and they're going to have a variety of different backgrounds. Don't think that they're in a basic ICU, a surgical ICU, trauma ICU, CV ICU. No, some of these people have some extensive backgrounds. Most of the time they're you know, if they're in academia, I'm not saying that this is guaranteed. If they're in academia, they usually are on their way toward retirement. So they have, they have a background. So do not try to bullcrap your way through that interview. Another thing I'm going to mention is that if you don't know it, that's okay. They can't expect you to know everything, especially when you don't know what you're preparing for. There could be a billion things they can ask you. And sometimes you get an interview for the next week the next day, the same day. So how could you expect to know all those things? So what I recommend is if you don't know something, tell them, hang on, maybe you can say, I don't know this, but maybe if you'd let me, can I talk you through the thought process I have of my critical thinking on this so-and-so disease process or so-and-so drip or so-and-so whatever, and see what they say. If you completely draw a blank and they, and you like, <laughs> let's say it's a silly question, like how do you calculate stroke volume? And you literally are, are losing it. Like you're at a point where your nerves have taken over and you have no words, nothing's coming out of your mouth. The best thing you can do is say, I'm sorry, I don't know it, but if you will, please let me get back to you and I'll email you as soon as this interview is over. I did that for my interview and let me tell you, I got some pretty great feedback on it and I want to say that's probably why I got accepted. So don't be scared to tell someone that you don't know because like I said, they want to see how you react to these certain situations. So if you don't know it, that's okay. And that one, that goes to show them that if you're in a situation where your patient is crashing or something went wrong and you don't know it, that you're not going to crumble under the pressure, that you're going to call for help and do the appropriate things that you need in order to keep your patients safe. That's what they wanna see. So make sure you don't crumble under the pressure and you use that as a reference that you could always email them after the interview, but do not <laughs> say that on multiple questions because then they're gonna say, hey, at this point it's a test and you're gonna give us the answers later. <laughs> it's absolutely not okay. One, maybe two, but that's tops. The, what you could do for that. So let's talk about case scenarios. They may give you a full case scenario and they want you to know or give them, you know, the drip of choice, the sedative of choice, the ventil ventilatory settings of choice. They can ask you a broad list of things with, with a case study or a clinical scenario. But um, just just try to think it out and tell them if you don't know it that you're going to critically think through this process because that's what that's really what it is that, that you will use your critical thinking i would also recommend that you start planning for cr uh, clinical scenarios that you've been through so they may ask you things that that really don't apply to icu they may ask you like how did you handle a situation with a tough coworker? you know because they want to know that you're able to manage 
being in a cohort with people because you're going to be with these students for the next three years. So if they th they find out from you that you're a confrontational person, they may not appreciate that. So definitely think that through. You know, if they're going to ask you something about how your personality is with others, plan ahead because remember, this is what they're trying to make sure that they get applicants that jive well together because they don't want to have they don't want to have any conflicts within the program. Think about it. It makes sense. Then also think of a scenario when, um, you know, you had a tough case, um, something that really got you down, um, something that made you question your career. You know, just start planning ahead things that you've experienced. We've experienced it all, but in the moment, you may not remember because you have five, six, seven years of experience or maybe even one or two years of experience, but there's so many different things that you've been through that you forget that you had one really difficult case or, you know, you, 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 you did something you've never seen before. You know, in the moment, you don't remember it. So just keep in mind those things. Like, these are like milestones of your career. Just put them back, take them off the back burner and put them back in your mind and remember, oh yeah, if they ask me about a scenario where I had a really difficult case, I'll mention this. And it'll work. I, they did ask me in both interviews a similar situation like that. Both interviews, they asked me about a difficult case and I mentioned the same one because it was a really difficult case and it was something I had never seen before. In fact, something that was so rare, not even some of the doctors had seen before. So it was pretty interesting to mention it to them and then they actually spun that you know, into different scenario questions. Like I said, anything is fair game. So don't say anything that you're, <laughs> you're not fully aware of, but definitely keep that in mind. Another clinical scenario question I can mention is maybe know your vents. Um, know your vents and know your blood gases. Um, you know, if, if, if anything that I could teach you is about going over ABGs, go over your ABGs, go over your vent settings, maybe talk to one of the RTs on the unit to give you like a little rundown again of the, of the vents and the different settings. Cause sometimes if you're in a, in a scenario where the, the hospitalists, they prefer a certain setting, you know, they may do volume controlled versus SIMV and you don't really see other types of ventilatory settings. You maybe want to ask for a refresher from an RT to help you because sometimes they'll actually give you a blood gas and they'll tell you like, how do you fix this? So what you need to do is think it through. First off, you need to know what the acid base dis disorder is and then plan from there like if you have a really high co2 maybe you want to increase the rate or maybe you have a really bad acidosis and then you want to give more fluids so it depends just think it through go over your abgs again um just talk to your nurse practitioners talk to the attendings ask them for advice on what they would do especially while you're there like if you have different patients um and this this is a or, or or maybe they order something to correct the blood gas and you don't know why just ask hey why did you come to that conclusion that you ordered this this medication or this fluid bolus for this type of acid-based disorder and they'll explain it to you i'm sure they'd be more than happy to all right i think that's about it that i can cover for clinical based scenarios i'm not sure entirely what every school is like and like I said I've only had two interviews and one of them was clinical and one of them was personality based so if there's other scenarios I've, I've seen the other youtubers talk about some other clinical scenarios that maybe I didn't mention I probably should have started off with etiquette so yes you will have those two styles of interviews um, there may even be some interviews that are like in-person full day interviews so you know, if they have you come to the school and it's from like eight to four, you know, with a whole bunch of other people, maybe they wanna see how you interact. I never had this scenario, so that's why I'm not really going into too much detail about it. But just know that if you have a full day interview, that anything goes, any reaction, anything. They wanna see how you react in the full day. Um, so just make sure you're on your best behavior, but I have never had this style of interview, so I'm not hundred percent sure to help you through it. Okay. Let's go over a little bit of interview etiquette before I close out this video. So let's say your interview is scheduled for 9 AM. Make sure that you're there early. You want to be there at least 15 minutes early, but I would want to give it at least a half an hour just to be safe. 
And if it's definitely an on-site interview, do like a dry run the day before just so you can plan ahead. Maybe the traffic, you know, is worse at that time and you don't you don't know what to expect at that time because you never drive at that time or whatever it is, okay? So try to do a dry run beforehand. But if it's a Zoom interview, you should be fine. Definitely just give yourself some time to log in and be logged in already so that when they start, when the other panel people start coming in that they know that the interviewee is already in the zoom room or whatever so just be on time but be early as well <laughs> let's talk about attire so what i wore for both of my interviews was a blazer pantsuit um you can wear as a woman you could probably wear uh, a business dress or a business uh, skirt or anything along those lines but i would definitely say not business casual i would say if anything business formal um you know this is an important day don't don't show up in jeans and a t-shirt like this is not some some casual experience with your friends no this is your future and your life is in their hands they can literally tell you yes or no based on how you look so the first impression is everything so make sure that you look like you're a professional and that they would be more than happy to have you in their program as soon as you get there introduce yourself obviously but thank them for their time Thank them for their time in the beginning and thank them again at the end. They literally are taking time out of their day to interview you. So thank them for it. They, you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to just be like, "Yeah, I'm here because you guys asked me to be here." No. They you're you're I'm telling you your future is on the line, so make sure that you're on your best behavior and be as professional as you possibly can be. Prepare questions for them they don't want to see that at the end of the interview you have no questions that means that you know everything about their program that you're prepared ahead of time and you are know-it-all in fact so yeah i would say the interview is just as important to you as it is to them so definitely prepare some questions ahead of time i had some pretty pretty valid questions when i asked remember i told you i was interviewing during covid so i said as covid surges on and more and more lockdowns are occurring as a student would I have issues getting clinical hours and they were more than happy to answer that they actually answered that the typical clinical hours that they fulfill is way more than the requirements so even though they the hospitals did shut down to students the students still had enough clinical hours to sit for their boards now that wasn't necessarily the answer that I wanted to hear I wanted to hear that we were still view it as essential but neither here nor there i i'm in the program and thankfully from what i can tell there are no lockdowns going on at this moment so and i don't have clinicals until about next year like a year and a half actually so i thought it was a pretty valid question so think ahead think um if you don't find the attrition rate or the pass rate ask it or if you didn't see the accreditation on their website, ask it. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to explain it to you. My school actually just got accredited, so I was confused on their accreditation process because the school itself was under a different name until recently, so they only have a few classes ahead of mine under this new name. So I was kind of confused about it, but they were more than happy to explain to me the accreditation process they had in their school and they were not upset about it so they could tell that i i was interviewing them as well so yeah i don't know what more i can tell you from my two little experiences that i had in crna school interviews but if you have any questions i'd be more than happy to help you with them just comment down below and i'll get back to you i'm usually really good about commenting right away um but that's about it for this video guys if you liked it give it a thumbs up and i'll catch you in my next one bye